Are you looking for a guide on how best to farm the irregular Moogle tombstones for this event that just came out? Hey guys, I'm Daniel. Thanks so much and welcome to Dragon War Gaming. And I'll be going over all the different ways that you can get tombstones in this event and letting you know what works, what doesn't, whether you have a blue mage or not. And if you are a blue mage, make sure to stick tuned to the end of the video where I'm going to be sharing an extra special tip on how to get uh, super quick farming for those. And I want to share a little bit more about the event. So with that, let's get into it. The Moogle Tombstone event is running from October 19th, and this is 2021, running till the patch 6.0, aka Endwalker. And for early access, that means that it's going to end on November 19th. So you have one month to get as many Moogle Tombstones as you get to get all the rewards that you're looking for. So with that, we have uh, a little bit here. I'll, I'll show some of these uh, in greater detail. But just to kind of give a quick overview, you're going to be challenging different, uh, you know, events or, or rather specific duties that you'll see. Uh, anything with the little Moogle icon is what will give you these irregular tombstones. And the key point here is that you cannot do it as an undersized party. So for some of these things that are like, you know, level 50, for example, you can't undersize it with your 80s, go in and just blast it apart and still get tombstones. Nope, you have to do it as intended mostly and by that I mean doing it synced and you know having a full party to actually do this content. I wanted to go through real quick just to kind of break down you know kind of my ranking system for what I think the, uh, the these different ways to get these tombstones are. So starting uh, at the top here so first is Castrum and Praetorium our main scenario dungeons that you queue for main scenario it's always one of these two we've done them so many times Especially if you've leveled multiple multiple characters, this is you know doing main scenario is a great way to get you know XP for for leveling your alts. But uh, as far as tombstones go, it's not really that efficient. It's uh, you know you look at ten or seven for these things, but they do take like forty five minutes and cast from maybe more like thirty. Uh, so I mean you're only talking like point two point two five tombstones per minute. So it's not it's not really a lot. So. But you do get it as part of if you're leveling an alt. So I would rank this like a 5 out of 10 just because only if you're using it also to level your characters. Like So if you do them once a day uh, just for your uh, just for your roulettes just to get some XP, I, I do like that. So I'd say like a 5 out of 10 just for the usefulness of it. The next one is Amarat. So this is a level 80 dungeon. So it gives 5, uh, which is nice because yeah, some of the other dungeons down below don't give as much. So still running this, I mean, it still takes like 15 to 20 minutes. You know, you can't do it unsynced because, you know, we can't, <laughs> we're not past 80 yet. Uh, so this particular one is a little bit better. It's, you know, maybe like 0.25, uh, but you can't run it very fast. Uh, you know, even wall-to-wall -wall pulling, I mean, it's there's still plenty of uh, things that will slow you down in, in the different fights and the different uh, mob pulls. So as far as farming tombstones, that's really the only thing you're going to be using it for. Uh, I'd say a 3 out of 10. That's not really worth your time. The next ones here are PvP. Now, PvP uh, is kind of broken into two categories. So they have, uh, so the four on the top here is part of the frontline mission. So when you queue for uh, for PvP, this is, you know, the ones that are under frontline. There's only ever one active uh, a day. So you don't have to worry about queuing for all four. So uh, just queue for whatever's there if you want to do those. And you can see that you get uh, three tombstones or five. And that just simply means whether you lose or you win. So I do recommend PvP for this one. And for this, you know, it's only, um, I'd say it's only for the front line, it's only, you know, 0.16 to 0.27. So it, it has that big range. Uh, but because you can also do you know, PvP for these wolf marks, the, the special PvP currency, uh, I do recommend that because, you know, PvP is not as big, not as popular in Final Fantasy, but if you do have a lot of people doing it, those queue times can be very quick, uh, or usually quicker doing these Moogle events. And so if there ever is a time to PvP, it usually is during these events, so it's now. So I'd rate the uh, the front lines as an 8 out of 10 just for the benefit of not only tombstones, but also for PvP you know, currency, the wolf marks. Uh, and then for the Hidden Gorge one, I think that one doesn't pop nearly as much when there's not this tombstone event but now it does pop a lot more often and so this one i would rate a 9 out of 10 as far as both again you're farming two things at once because you're farming both the moogle tombstones and wolf marks 
So next are the 60 and 70 dungeons. Now these award four tombstones for a clear of each, but for these, I'm going to say I do not recommend them. The different ways that these mobs, these pulls work, is that it does try to gate you at certain areas. And I was pointed out by a friend that each of these dungeons represents both the, uh, the final uh, dungeon of the expansion, as well as the final dungeon of the post-expansion, right? So Aetherical Chemical is the last of the Heaven Award, Bailsaw's Wall is the last of the post-Heaven's Award right before Stormblood. And because they're kind of these story-heavy dungeons, they are there's a lot more going on, they're a lot more intricate, and therefore there's a lot more that'll slow you down. So I would not recommend these for Moogle Tombstone farming. So even though you can use Blue Mages, and you can see in some of the video that we have done that, they're just simply not as fast because there's too many things that gate you and slow you down. So the next one here is the level 50 content, the level 50 raids. Now this is where things get really interesting because so these only give three uh, Moogle tombstones and the Alliance raids, the Labyrinth of Agents, Circus Tower, World of Darkness, these are <laughs> these are pretty typical for these kind of events where lots of people run them and they usually don't take too long but I mean it's still like 20 minutes uh, for some of these runs so in terms of the time it takes and for the amount that they award in my opinion, it's not really worth it. It's one of those, if you're doing it for your, uh, you know, for your roulettes, for your dailies, then great. You know, similar to the, uh, the cash room or Praetorium, like maybe a 5 out of 10. But if you're doing specifically and only for Moogle Tombstones and you've already done your roulette for the day, I, this drops to a 2 out of 10. I would, I would not do Labyrinth of the Ancients, Circus Tower, or World of Darkness. And then when you get to the, the regular raids... Uh, for AR, so we're having uh, yeah, Binding Coil Bahamut turn 1. This one I'm putting as a 1 out of 10. This is the worst one that you can do. The reason is because this is an AR when they were still kind of finding their footing as far as what the raid content was going to be in this game. <coughs> so they kind of copied a little bit of the style that WoW used where there's, you know, there's some trash before the boss. And so you had to do all this clearing of trash that was, you know, not trivial just to get to the boss. And it was, it, this one takes so long, even as synced, you know, content and even trying to use blue mages, like just getting to the boss and then killing it, it was just, it's just too much of a hassle. So one out of 10 for that one. But things completely change for Binding Coil Bahamut turn two. So if you've seen or heard on Reddit, and uh, I've actually created a whole separate video just for this turn, for Binding Coil Bahamut turn two, also known as the fight of ADS. And this particular one is by far and away the best way to farm Moogle Tombstone. So this one gets an 11 out of 10. Like this is how broken this one is. So the I'll, I'll have more details in, in the video in my, in, in my video in the description below. But uh, this particular one does require, again, blue mages. Blue mages are just king of this synced, you know, level 50, 60, 70 content. So for the last section, the 60 and 70 raids and trials, these are slightly better than some of the other options, but they're nowhere close to the Binding Coil turn 2 if you have blue mages. So if you don't have blue mages, this is where I would go. I would recommend Containment Bay P1T6. I'd say this one gets about a 7 out of 10. Uh, so again, I would still probably put PvP higher just because you're also getting those PvP uh, marks as well. But so I think so if it gets a, a seven out of ten, I think the rest of these, I'll say these guys get about a six out of ten. I mean they're still fast, they're still doable. Uh, and then Alpha Escape is you know, for Omega. I this particular one I think is like. It's just a little bit harder, it takes a little bit longer, and so this one drops down again. I'd probably say a 2 out of 10 for this one. This was usually not worth your time. Uh, but the other ones at least are quick enough that, that they might be worth it. Guys, I hope you found the video helpful. If you found value in the video, please make sure to like and subscribe for more Final Fantasy Guide content coming your way. And uh, if, you still, uh, if you're looking for that Blue Mage farming video for ADS, and so you can farm tombstones super, super quick. Make sure to check that video here. Also a link in the description below. So guys, this has been so much fun. Thank you so much for watching. Stay awesome, and I'll see you in the next one.